Hey everyone, this is Cloud Chief. In today's video, I am going over my job guide for Warrior. Warrior can primarily fill two major roles for a party, and that is as a melee damage dealer and a blood tank. Warrior's strengths are that it has relatively high HP and it has really high strength attributes. It also can uh, potentially deal out really high damage because of having decent attack, a high double attack rate, and access to lots of JAs that will enhance its damage potential. It also has access to a few hate grabbing tools in forms of JAs through Provoke, War Cry, and Blood Rage. War can also be very versatile as it can be a damage dealer and then also jump into a tank as need be or can just be focusing on tanking while doing a really good job at tanking can typically deal out more damage than any other tank could in that given situation. Also, War has the most versatility in the fact that it has the highest skill among all the varieties of different weapons in any other job in the game. Some of the limitations for War is that for most of the weapons that it can use, it's not the best. The only thing that it's really going to be best in is Great Axe. Everything else you can typically find another job that will be better at specializing for a specific weapon. The other limitation is that it has low weapon skill damage from its best weapon which is Great Axe. Whereas typically with other DD type jobs you're going to have higher base weapon skill damage. The other limitation is that War is not good against magic. So if you are trying to tank something that is very, you know, caster heavy, it's not going to be good for either status effects and or receiving magic damage. So let's move on to abilities. Provoke a quick hate grabbing tool that degrades relatively quickly. You need to keep using provoke if you're trying to maintain hate over a long period of time because it's going to keep degrading. If you're also trying to keep hate, you're going to need to be able to do damage because you're not going to keep hate with just JAs for very long unless you're able to deal damage also. The Berserk job ability. This ups your attack but lowers your defense. And then the Defender job ability, which lowers your attack but ups your defense. But interestingly enough, when you actually start putting in more job points, the bonus you get to attack when using Berserk or the bonus you get from defense when using Defender is actually higher than the detriment you get. So in certain situations where you're tanking and you don't really want to take a defense loss but you would like to up your attack, you can pop Berserk and Defender while you're not going to be getting as much benefit out of one or the other, you will still get attack and defense increases by having them both up rather than not using them at all. Aggressor. This increases your accuracy but lowers your evasion. War Cry. This is an AoE attack bonus for your party within range. You can also put points in that will allow it to give a TP bonus. So basically you can set it up so in theory your party could be weapon skilling at 1500 TP and it would be like their weapon skilling at 2000 TP. And considering that's a party buff this can be extremely strong. Warcry also grabs a lot of hate. Blood Rage. This is an AoE critical hit buff for your party within range. Be aware though that Blood Rage and Warcry do not stack. In fact, one will overwrite the other one. So if you use Warcry and then use Blood Rage, Blood Rage will overwrite Warcry. Also if you use Blood Rage and then use Warcry, Warcry will then override Blood Rage. You do want to utilize and use both of these JAs, however Warcry can be buffed and set up to be substantially stronger than Blood Rage is. So if you were going to only use one over the other, Warcry would definitely be the one you want to use. However, use both, but just make sure that your war cry is down before you use blood rage or vice versa to get the maximum benefit for your party. Restraint. This increases weapon skill damage the more hits that you do with the mob before you actually weapon skill. This JA is kind of lackluster 
as you need a substantial amount of hits before you're actually going to hit the cap that's going to increase weapon skill damage. There's no reason not to use this JA, but you're not actually going to see substantial increase compared to like Berserk and Warcry. So go ahead and pop it and use it, but you're not going to really get a ton out of this. You also really shouldn't be waiting and holding your TP to increase your weapon skill damage. You're just going to get a lot higher total numbers by just weapon skilling when you have TP for whatever is appropriate for what weapon skill you're doing, as opposed to trying to hit the max weapon skill damage with restraint. Plus you're done just wasting time. Use it because it will increase your damage, but it's just kind of eh. Retaliation. This allows you to, when you receive a hit, you will basically counterattack. However, unlike counterattack, you will still receive damage. It doesn't like block damage and give the hit. It's basically you are retaliating for taking some damage. So it will act like an auto attack that will retaliate for the enemy. But unlike counterattack, this actually gives you TP. In fact, this move, if used correctly when AoEing, can be a fantastic way just to wipe out hordes of mobs really quickly as you can just get your TP gain really, really quickly at almost absurd levels and then you can be doing AoE weapon skill moves to quickly take out mobs. When retaliation is up though, you will have a reduction in movement speed. Warrior's Charge is another JA that you can actually get from Merits, and this forces that your next attack will do a double attack. This was a great Merit job ability to have back in the 75 days, but now since you can get your double attack rate so high, it's not anywhere near as strong as it used to be. Tomahawk is another Merit at JA. And if the enemy has a physical resistance to a certain damage type, it reduces that resistance by 25% if Tomahawk lands. It does actually take an item use that is a Tomahawk that you equip in your ammo slot to use this JA. Last and certainly not least are Warrior's one hour job abilities. First is Mighty Strikes, which makes all of your melee hits hit a 100% critical hit rate, including weapon skills. Mighty Strikes is such a broken job ability that it can just skyrocket your damage and just make you do absurd amount of damage and is great for Zerg fights. This is just gonna push your damage potential through the roof and just make you utterly destroy mobs. This lasts for 45 seconds. Warrior's second one hour ability is Brazen Rush. This increases your double attack rate. It starts out at 100% but slowly diminishes over the 30 second duration. So Warrior synergizes really well with melee parties. You can pretty much take a melee party and at any point throw a war in there and they will get along with the party quite well. Considering you have so many different weapon types you can pretty much always find a skill chain that'll work. If you're trying to make a multi-step skill chain, I'm sure War can figure out a weapon that will work with the party to be able to do multi-step skill chains without too much difficulty. Because Warrior has so many different weapon types, if say you were fighting uh, Warder of Tempest, you're going to need blunt damage, you're going to need piercing damage, and you're going to need slashing damage. Warrior can very easily fill into any of those roles with uh, different weapons to just make use and to easily take down mobs that are weak to certain weapon types. Also, since war is high HP and defense, it's great in a party if you need it to off-tank for something, or if you don't even really have a tank in a party, war can be great just to start a fight off by evoking the mob and just making sure it's not running around like crazy, and it can typically be the best when there's no designated tank to be the one to take a few hits. So let's jump into merits. So talking about category one, you can increase your double attack rate, or you can lower the timers of Berserk, Defender, Warcry, and Aggressor. As for my recommendations, I would put 5 points into double attack, so that is increasing your double attack rate by 5%. And then I would put 5 points into Berserk. But considering how you're geared, I could see someone who's like, my double attack rate's high enough, putting your points in Berserk and Warcry. 
I wouldn't bother putting points into Defender because you can keep Defender up 100% of the time if need be, and even if you want to go up and drop it, you don't really use Defender as much. And Aggressor, you should be gearing enough for accuracy, so dropping your evasion while increasing your accuracy is kind of meh. You're better off with your attack with either you know Berserk or Warcry. Now let's talk about the Category 2 Merits. So there's Warrior's Charge, which is a new JA that you get, that when you use it, your next attack, whether it's a weapon skill or auto attack, will be guaranteed to be a double attack. Then there is Tomahawk, and putting more points into that will increase the duration of it. Savagery, which actually gives you a TP bonus to Warcry. And then Aggressive Aim, which gives you increased accuracy when using range attacks. So Aggressive Aim is pretty much useless. I wouldn't even bother putting any points in it. Just pretend it's not even there. You're never really using range attacks on Warrior at this point in time. So that leaves Warrior's Charge, Tomahawk, and Savagery. In terms of where do we want to put our 10 points, I would recommend putting 5 into Savagery because that will give Warcry a TP bonus of 500 TP for everyone in your party. When you start stacking this with other TP bonus gear, plus you can increase Warcry's duration, you can just make Warcry a ridiculously strong ability that just buffs your whole party, your whole party doing substantially more damage. So I see no reason that you wouldn't put 5 points in Savagery. So if you're going that route, that leaves you 5 points left. I would either put 5 points in Tomahawk, so that way you're lowering the mob's you know, resistance to whatever it's you know, strong resistance in. Or if you really want Warrior's Charge, which again, because of the high amount of double attack rate you can get, isn't really as needed. But if you really want it in, I would put then just one point in Warrior's Charge and four into Tomahawk would be my recommendations. So now let's jump into talking about how you want to gear your war. Let's start with your TP set. Firstly, you want to make sure that you have enough accuracy. If you're not hitting the mob, then you're not going to be doing any damage. As long as you're keeping your accuracy at a reasonable level so you're getting a decent hit rate, you shouldn't really have any problems and you can be focusing on other stats. The next thing that I would be focusing on is double attack and just other multi-hit. I do want to put other multi-hit in there because like Flama Head is a perfect example that has triple attack on it and just the rest of the stats on it are really good so you should be using it. Considering War gets bonuses to double attack so that way your attack is stronger when you double attack and there's other gear that augments that, you do want to just kind of focus on double attack. After that I would be focusing on critical hit rate and damage. So just getting more critical hits is just going to increase your damage that much. And then of course increasing the damage for when you critical hit so it's even higher is just going to up your damage. After that if you can just push in some more attack that's always nice. And then if you're not losing anything out of the other stats we talked about just getting you know some damage taken and just some more defensive stuff is always nice. So I would make sure you're hitting the you know, accuracy cap if you can on the mobs. Then be focusing on multi-hit, mainly double attack, then critical hit, and then attack would be my order in trying to get gear for your TP set. So now let's jump into weapon skills real quick before we start talking about weapon skill gear. Because this is going to be relevant for what you are actually gearing towards. So in terms of relevant weapon skills that you're going to typically be doing that are focusing on damage, King's Justice, Yuko's Fury... Metatron Torment, Fell Cleave, Decimation, Ruinator, Impulse Drive, and Resolution are all strength based mod at weapon skills. So you really want to be trying to pump in as much strength as possible when weapon skilling to try and maximize out the damage. Upheaval is actually Vit modded only, and then Scourge, along with all the break moves, are actually Strength and Vit modded both. So you want to be aware of what they are modded by, so that way you're maximizing the effect out of the weapon skills. Now let's move on to actually gearing for weapon skilling. I would focus on weapon skill damage, then focus on whatever 
attribute that is augmented by the weapon skill that you are doing, then try and focus on multi-hit. For some weapon skills, weapon skill damage is calculated across all the hits if it's a multi-hit and some of them it's only the first hit the other thing about weapon skill damage is understanding if you are hitting low numbers with your weapon skill you're going to be better off gearing for whatever stat is going to augment the weapon skill so strength or vit in terms of war Whereas if you're getting higher numbers, you're then going to be getting a better benefit out of weapon skill damage. Considering it is a percent increase on your weapon skill. So if you are early on in your gearing up career, you might want to focus more on strength or vit for your weapon skill. And as you start getting higher up, then start focusing more on weapon skill damage. So now let's move on to tanking. I would focus on hitting that 50% damage taken as soon as possible. After you get that, then focus on HP and getting your HP higher. After that, start focusing on defense and magic defense and magic evasion. And then as a last statistic to try to be focusing on accuracy. Because typically when you're in tanking sets, your accuracy is going to take a hit. So being able to hit the mobs definitely helps keep hate. The Silvia set from Ambuscade is a decent set to start out with for your damage taking because it also is decent gear on top of that just for doing damage and has a decent amount of accuracy. However, I would try to move to something that typically has a little more HP when you can, but you can definitely get by with using this set for starting out. War can use the Sovereign set that Paladin so prominently uses and is just ridiculous gear. However, there can be a drawback if you are the only tank with that, and that is it can have such high levels of HP if you happen to pull hate and then swap into that gear, especially if you're doing something solo with trusts, they can burn your MP, curing your HP up, and then when you're ready to switch back to damage, it's going to drop your HP down, and basically you just forfeited it, all that HP that got cured, and you're now just burning through your MP for your trusts. So it is something to be aware of and it might be good to have multiple damage taken sets if you get to a point where you have very high HP, uh, but that's something to worry about down the road and isn't as required. Next I want to talk on an amenity set. You really do want to have an amenity set for, if nothing else, provoke just to help for when you're tanking. You can also have for an oh shit moment uh, an amenity set set for war cry and blood rage but ideally you would want to be saving and putting in equipment that's going to augment war cry and blood rage as opposed to using those for hate grabbing moves but again depending on the situation you may want to be able to use war cry and blood rage to grab hate so having a macro ready that does put on a mini set when those are getting popped so you're grabbing more hate is a good idea when you're trying to be a top end war tank. Also having a pooling set where you're going to be mostly in damage taken, defense and regen uh, gear while also making sure you have some movement speed for pulling is definitely a good idea. You'd either want to be using the Adeline movement speed ring or Hermes sandals and, and then at that point trying to hit the damage taken cap and then be focusing on regen. Let's jump in and start talking about weapons. For the most part when you're at level 99 and more importantly 119, for the most part you really do want to be using a great axe. You can definitely use an axe and you can definitely get yourself set up like using the ambuscade axe or the ambuscade polearm can just be ridiculous damage, but we'll talk about that in a minute. We're really going to give the maximum benefit out to the party using a great axe, especially using break moves along with using Yuko's Fury and Upheaval. They're really good for skill chaining and they can deal decent damage and just kind of help with the overall flow of the party. The overall great axe can be a decent place to start if you are focusing strictly on damage. Considering it has negative amenity on it, if you're not trying to tank at all and you're just trying to go in the party to do damage early on, this can be a decent starting weapon. 
Weapons I would then try and move to would be either the Ice Coral or the Agonosh, which would be a decent step up in terms of weapons until you're starting to get to the point where you're going to be finishing an Ambuscade weapon or you're going to be getting a Rima. Ultimately, you would want to try and get a Chango if getting a Onyx is something that is attainable for you. This is arguably the best Great Axe that you can get for war. And it is the best in situations where you're going to be trying to skill chain. Plenty of people put down Yukon Vesera. It is honestly a ridiculous weapon and I'm not sure why it gets put down. The main reason would probably be because of its lower weapon skill damage numbers that it's going to put up. However, that's not the strength of the Empyrean weapon. The strength of it is really going to be the white damage that you can pump out. As someone who has it and uses it a lot, I can tell you it is not uncommon to be getting 4 to 6k auto attack normal hits. And that's just from a single hit. Considering you're multi-attacking all the time, it's not uncommon to be getting, you know, 5k uh, auto attack. You could easily get like 2, 5 to 6k auto attacks from one double attack round. The strength of Yukon really is in its white damage and I've had plenty of people actually just look at total numbers from a parse afterwards and be like, wow, I didn't realize that the weapon was that good. So don't think it's just Chango or nothing because you can do quite well with an Empyrean weapon. As for using just a regular axe, I wouldn't really bother using an axe unless you are using the Ambuscade axe. If you're using Double Chinus, then it can actually make using an axe a viable option. The damage you can pump out with Decimation using the Ambuscade axe is absurd. The only thing about it is it doesn't scale damage with TP as the scaling is for accuracy only. So if you're starting to get a lot of buffs and stuff where you're trying to scale with TP, you're going to get essentially diminishing returns. You're going to get the best benefit at going as soon as you have TP and not really buffing your TP bonus or trying to scale TP with that. You're going to be better off using other weapons if that's the case. In terms of great swords, you're typically not really going to be using great swords nowadays. Although, if you are, you would want to be using Zulkifer or be using Ragnarok. Well, there was a point in time when Ragnarok was kind of considered the king for war, it's now kind of put down on. And I kind of get it. However, people do seem to look past that it really does have high critical hit rate. And you can still do some decent white damage. While it's not going to be keeping up with Yukon, it is still a pretty decent weapon. And from my understanding, it is still the best weapon to use if you are Mighty Strike Zerging. The Shining One would be another weapon to use if you're trying to go for high damage as that can quite easily be the weapon that hits the highest specific damage numbers of any weapon. The thing about it is it's not really worth using unless you are at 3000 TP when actually using Impulse Drive. It is quite possible though with all the TP bonus War is able to get hitting that 3k when you're not even at 3k TP, therefore getting the maximum bonus you can out of the Shining One. Just to note, pretty much any weapon though that is an Ambuscade weapon that War can use, you can get decent benefit out of, but really you're going to get the most benefit out of either just the regular axe and then the pole arms, or then typically sticking with a Remo. Revere is another nice weapon to use for war, but if you're going to be using this, you typically want to be doing this if you're more tanking. The big draw for this is when you have Aftermath up, you actually get a decent amount of damage taken. Therefore, making it much easier to adjust your gear to be focusing more on damage and essentially be like a hybrid DD tank build. I personally want to get myself set up and actually have one of these as I do like war tanking a decent bit and I think it would be a lot of fun to be kind of in a hybrid build doing high damage while also tanking and laughing as the mobs tickle you. Just some gear to note that you really would ideally want to be focusing on trying to obtain 
getting a decent amount of the AF plus 3 gear is really good. Some of the Relic plus 3 gear is also really good, namely the head, but that can actually be quite expensive. Udo Grip is another high-end piece. I know when I first got it, I wasn't expecting how much that that dex bonus increases your weapon skill damage. It's kind of like, well, I'm not modding for dex, it's kind of like, eh, but it really does give a substantial bonus. If you can get an Udo grip, definitely do it. Try and get on those kin runs when you can. The Nikmadu ring from FU is also a really good ring that you want to try and focus and get. That quad attack along with the, all the other stats that are on it for when you're TPing is just really nice. Also getting an Ioska belt off the auction house is really good. All that haste and double attack is just really good for war. Brutal, Sessant, and Telost earrings are really good earrings because of all the double attack and additional stats that they give your character. Also, gear that you can get from the Odin High Tier Battle is pretty good gear, and you should try and obtain that for war. And all this talk about all this different gear, though, don't be afraid to experiment and actually, you know, go outside the box. You don't always need to try and be in the meta. In fact, you can quite often break the meta, especially in this game, by, you know, trying different things. So, just because I didn't mention a piece of gear or something in this guide, definitely doesn't mean it should be ignored or you shouldn't try going for it if it's something that you want to do try experiment test and you know go outside the box thank you guys for tuning in thank you for supporting the channel have fun rocking out the job warrior because it is a lot of fun and as always may you have success in all you do